Okay, so in the last video, we talked about uh, our short run equilibrium and the medium run equilibrium, basically where we are at the natural rate of unemployment and the natural level of output. And so the obvious question then is, okay, well, in the short run, we can be either above or below the natural unemployment rate and the natural level of output. Um, how do we get back to the medium run? And so that's what we're going to talk about here. So as we said, right, in the short run, we can we will be at sort of our equilibrium uh, point, um, but we can uh, in the we can be above or below the equilibrium point in the medium run. And so in the short run and so in the medium run, we want to get back to this um, natural level of output and the natural rate of unemployment. And so the key here is that um, one way that that's going to happen, right, is that inflation is going to adjust and we're going to get back to the real interest rate that is associated with the natural level of output, right? So if the LM curve uh, shifts up or down, that will change the real interest rate and there will be some level of the real interest rate that is associated with the natural level of uh, output. And so this is often, you know, we put in a little N in the subscript as we did with output and the unemployment rate. And that's sometimes referred to as the natural uh, rate of interest or the neutral rate of interest, uh, or sometimes the Wixellian rate of interest named after the economist that sort of talked about this. Um, and so if the Federal Reserve is trying to think about, okay, well, what is the um, interest rate the target policy rate that is associated with constant inflation, right, the same level of inflation this year as last year, then they need to figure out what this natural rate of interest RN is. Um, and one of the keys here is going to be that uh, expected inflation is going to be important, right, because we know that the real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus inflation. And if the expected interest rate is high, then that's going to mean that the nominal interest rate has to be high. And if the expected inflation rate is low, then the nominal interest rate uh, can be lower, assuming that this sort of RN is fixed by real factors, right? By, you know, things like technological growth, by things in the labor market, um, and so that's obviously an important question that we have to think about. We have to think about, all right, well, what is that uh, RN? Okay, so let's think about if we have anchored expectations. And by anchored expectations, what we mean is that people expect uh, constant uh, inflation, right? Now, anchored expectations could be anything. They could be zero. They could be 2%. They could be 10%. They could be 15%. But the key is that there's no change in expected inflation um, due to past inflation, right? We just always expect inflation to be 2%, say. Um, then in this case, so now if we have a positive output gap, so Y minus YN is positive, then that's going to be a higher level of inflation. Um, just kind of it's going to go from, you know, maybe 2% to 5%, but it's not going to keep going up. Um, it's not going to be, you know, 5% this year and then 8% next year and then 11% the year after that. Um, the key is, you know, the central bank doesn't need to sort of worry about compensating for a boom with a recession later by changing expectations. And so this is one of the reasons that the Federal Reserve and really central banks all over the world take inflationary expectations to be so important, right? Because if they let the economy believe that they're going to have higher and higher inflation, uh, then it's going to be harder and harder to get back to the natural level of output um, without a, a recession, right? Uh, and the canonical sort of example of that type of recession is the early 1980s, where inflationary expectations had really gotten out of control throughout the 70s. And the Fed basically had to raise interest rates really high in order to reduce uh, expected inflation um, and get us back to a more sort of constant low level of inflation rather than this ever increasing inflation.
So the other sort of danger is uh, a zero lower bound in a deflationary spiral, right? And so if we have a zero lower bound that prevents our monetary policy uh, from getting us back to the natural rate, right? So here we have the sort of natural level of output associated with the natural rate of unemployment. Um, and what can happen then is that, you know, deflation, uh, meaning a negative inflation rate, leads to a higher real interest rate, right? Because the real interest rate is the nominal interest rate minus inflation. Inflation now is negative, so that adds to the real interest rate instead of subtracting from it. And a higher real interest rate means that we're moving to the up and to the left on our IS curve because investment is more expensive, right? And so we're investing less, we're building fewer houses, etc. cetera. Um, and we end up with lower uh, and lower output. And so instead of getting back up to this natural level of output that we want to be, we're forced into a lower level of output. Um, this is, you know, one uh, explanation of what was happening during the Great Depression. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this zero lower bound is really important, right? It, it makes it, it pot, you know, impossible to uh, achieve a, a large enough negative real policy rate, right? Because we can only, our, our, the lowest our real policy rate can be is uh, negative inflation or negative expected inflation. And so if uh, inflation is expected to be 2%, then the lowest that real policy rate can be is negative 2%. And when it's when we have deflation right now, it's negative a negative. So if we expect, uh, you know, inflation to be negative three percent, now our real policy rate is three percent instead of, you know, zero or minus three um, percent. And so that's a, that can be a big problem. And it's one of the reasons that some economists have suggested that we need a higher inflation target, right? So instead of a 2% inflation target, which is fairly common um, among central banks around the world, we should have a 4% inflation target or something like that. So let's look at the Great Depression now. Um, this really sort of seems to have uh, been a, a perfect example of a deflationary trap between the sort of start of the Great Depression in 1929 when we had the stock market crash and the real bottom of the Great Depression, which happened around 1933, right? It took us still another sort of seven to eight years to climb out of the Great Depression um, with some ups and downs along the way. But 1933 certainly seems to be the bottom. So let's look at that. So the unemployment rate was quite low in 1929, right? It was the end of the roaring 20s. The uh, economy seemed to be doing really well. We have the stock market crash. Output falls. Um, and the inflation rate is base is zero um, in 1929. So then, uh, and then we can sort of calculate the, the real interest rate, right? Is the nominal interest rate was 5.3%, inflation was zero, so 5.3 minus zero is 5.3. And now in 1930, the unemployment rate starts to climb. And so by 1930, it's 8.7, um, and it keeps climbing until 1933, it's about 25%, right? So you know, even worse um, than, you know, significantly worse than the financial crisis and the Great Recession, um, and really significantly worse even than the COVID pandemic um, because it lasted so, so long. Um, and so what's happening here is output continues to shrink, right? So we're getting farther and farther away from our natural level of output. Um, the nominal interest rates... <laughs> For some reason are not dropped fast enough right this is one of the criticisms of federal reserve policy is that they didn't drop the nominal interest rates fast enough so they're 4.4 percent 3.1 percent back up to 4.0 percent uh, and then 2.6 percent in 1933 and we get deflation um and that's not surprising given that our output uh gap is you know so large um, and so our inflation is negative 2.5 percent, minus 9 percent, minus 10 percent in 1932, and minus 5.2 percent. So what's happening to the real interest rate? Well, now the real interest rate, remember, is the nominal interest rate minus inflation. Inflation is negative, so a minus a minus is a positive. And now our real interest rate is climbing. Our real interest rate by 1932 is almost 15 percent. 
So now if you are looking to invest, you're looking to uh, and, you know, build a new factory, borrow money, um, build a new house, get a mortgage, your real interest rate is really high. There's no incentive to do that. And so, you know, output keeps falling and, um, you know, it's, it doesn't really start to recover until 1934. Um, but even then, uh, we, we still have problems and it takes a long time to recover. Um, so, you know, one of the lessons learned from the Great Depression uh, by the Federal Reserve was to drop nominal interest rates to zero um, immediately, basically. So by the end of 2008, the federal funds rate target is zero. Um, and to try to keep away from deflation. So we ended up with one year of a small amount of deflation in 2009. Um, that was somewhat related to uh, food prices, uh, global food prices. Um, but then we had sort of positive but low inflation in years after that. And so our real interest rate um, was not was negative, right? It wasn't very negative, but it was uh, negative. And so that's important.